Should be because I know uh, there are examples when we don't have uh, a standard description of that support variety. There is an example I found in my paper. They are not so easy to find, mm -hmm. but maybe some Cartan type algebra I would not expect. And uh, yes, one <coughs> one condition that uh, that we have here yeah, it's also a, it's a good exercise, by the way, not very difficult. So any such rate of algebra is restricted. 
So if you have something non-restricted, that then has no chance. So <coughs> if I say such what I do. But for example, if you take a reductive subalgebra of reductive algebra, is it saturated? Yeah, that's not true. Uh, I don't know. But you know, the intersection of the parabolic. Uh, I will tell you. It's intersectional parabolic. Yeah, but still it could be yes, but it could be some other kind of yeah. some it's substance. It's of it's no, but uh, not not any reductive subalgebra can be obtained. I guess as intersection. No, no, no. 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 In fact, I don't know what you can obtain uh, by intersecting parabolics. But we do have an, an interesting class of the so-called bi parabolics. Yeah. And that these are such as an example. You find the such rate that then uh, when we erase the elements to the power of here, it's still right. And and the way uh, to prove it here, you, you need to use the fact that uh, this representation is restricted. So that, 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 that's how you prove it. Because um, uh, x to the in the <coughs> in the involving algebra you can erase the element of x to the power of p and then you project and then you will still be here. And for parabolics, you need to use the fact that uh, any parabolic uh, can be described as... So did uh, you just solve the fourth exercise? Uh, you, the fourth exercise, it showed that if S is saturated, then the piece power of S is contained in it. You, you just solved it? Uh, I, it's not, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a solution, it's just a hint. Ah, it's just yeah. a hint. Well, I'm giving a hint here as well. I mean, that for those who are interested, any parabolic can be um, uh, realized as a set of all, as a span of all uh, non-negative weights for some one-dimensional problem. <coughs> and the same will apply for this. And then since this map is g equivariant, then, then we will basically have that. The same more or less proof holds for the same parabolic. So what we uh, have is a large class uh, of subalgebra. And um, the interesting thing is that <laughs> we, we have a standard description of support variety. So, uh, <clears throat> so the proposition uh, is, uh, which you can also prove by using the properties of uh, of this Milner's map. Uh, the way this map beta uh, uh, was described, uh, so you have beta maps. Uh, 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 U uh, of S on to uh, is, well, there is a notation, it's uh, a bit confusing, but I will write it anyway. <coughs> so the symmetric algebra of S uh, and uh, sends. Uh, the ideal uh, i chi, but not for the real algebra of G, but i chi of S. So I hope this uh, notation is clear uh, on to uh, J chi. Remember, I introduced two ideals. This is defining ideal for induced enveloping algebra, but not for G, for S. And this is defining ideal of symmetric algebra, reduced symmetric algebra also for S. So hence, uh, because we know what the support variety of this is, so hence uh, we obtain that the variety uh, is universal variety uh, <coughs> of uh, U chi S modules is the P character chi is just is equal to this N P of, uh, of S chi. S chi being the central uh, the stabilizer stabilizer of chi <coughs> of chi So in particular this holds for parabolics for centralizers of important elements for biparabolics and this is uh, for every kind. <coughs> so there is a large class of uh, restricted Lie algebras for which we do have this sort of standard description of, uh, of universal support. Um, and now I will uh, introduce this, I think, uh, part 2.3. If I uh, mix up my number, 
So guy at least about five thousand. So we have this um, local projectivity criterion for reduced and developing algebra, but projective doesn't always imply free, although for some algebra it does. Okay, so um, let L be again uh, finite dimensional or restricted G algebra. Uh, and we take uh, chi a linear function um, and uh, let n be a restricted subalgebra of L. Now we say <coughs> n is uh, chi admissible, uh, n is chi admissible. Uh, if, uh, if the following conditions hold. Um, first of all, uh, the first condition is we want n to be in the new quantum column of L. So n <coughs> just consists of uh, new quantum <coughs> elements, which uh, implies that it is itself new quantum as a real algebra. Uh, but we, we need uh, more <coughs> the second property, uh, the ideal, uh, so chi vanishes on something that I'm going to write down. So this this n is what you usually call NP? No, NP is to the piece. Uh, n, n is just an this admin code. So uh, in characteristic zero, this would be enough. Uh, so chi must vanish on the derived subalgebra, but since the piece power map could be intricate, let us add uh, some stuff which will disappear when P is very big, say, chi g is over to two Chi vanishes on this, uh, this is a <coughs> an idea, a restricted idea. And it is also proper because of this property. So one, one can show that this idea is, is proper. Essentially, by end is here. <coughs> so these two conditions are, are very uh, easy to satisfy. Uh, and the third uh, condition is uh, a little bit uh, mysterious that we want end intersection with, uh, with the support variety. Uh, to be zero. Real. So since in general we don't know what this is, uh, <coughs> this is a big question mark, but for uh, for such a rate of algebra, uh, this can be stated in a better way. So uh, if, uh, let's say, if L is saturated in G, then, uh, then we need, <coughs> we need uh, this condition. We can just rewrite it. Uh, so M intersection is uh, uh, an important point that and P of chi to be. So in this case, this mysterious, and mysterious condition yeah, becomes. You, so you, you mean n? Sorry? n such uh, if, uh, if L is. No, no. Uh, n uh, is, is a subalgebra of L, and we are assuming that L itself is saturated in G. So for, for example, we're interested in. Uh, in uh, about studying representations of centralizers of new quantum elements, which is a large class. 
then we know it's saturated, and then we could still have some uh, admissible subject. So in that case, <coughs> we know the description of real chi in that case. So 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 Mm -hmm. Does it mean that this well, is well, 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 okay, let me rewrite it. Uh, then I becomes. So. <clears throat> right, now why, why do we care about this? Well, I mean, uh, this is actually the main source of, uh, of these finite W objects, that kind of miscible subjects. So let me, uh, so we get some closer now to W algebra that at the moment the characteristic P. <coughs> so now I will um, introduce some, uh, some uh, things about related uh, to this. So now suppose uh, N is kind of miscible. Uh, in L any uh, restricted free algebra, then uh, this condition, uh, the condition I implies, well, in part, uh, these two conditions imply that uh, um, U chi of M has a unique uh, simple module. Uh, <clears throat> up to isomorphism, which I will write down k1 chi, it's one dimensional. Uh, that maybe I should uh, stay with here. Uh, as a unique simple module, which is uh, one dimension. So this module is uh, k1 chi, and the action uh, of um, effects any element x on this canonical generator will be just evaluating that time. So for all x that uh, you So it means that it has a unique simple module and mm -hmm. this module is one dimension. Yes. And this module is uh, has dimension one. This essentially follows from Engels theorem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we conceive by Engels theorem this idea uh, that uh, trivially well we'll have a kernel on any number. And so on the portion this abelian and also the this part map is essentially zero because it's all in this. And from that you can see that it must be one dimensional and this condition should require some computation. So okay, <coughs> therefore um, from the theory of um, associative algebra it follows that the algebra itself uh, u chi of uh, of M. Here I identify uh, chi with chi restricted to M. Just to simplify notation, otherwise I would have to write down this thing called this. So then U chi of M <coughs> uh, is a local algebra. Uh, and it's Jacobson radical. It's Jacobson radical. for dimension one. And therefore, uh, well, it is indecomposable. This algebra is indecomposable as the left module of itself. So, U chi of M is uh, indecomposable as the left module. So it has only one projective in the composable module. Of it itself. It dishes itself. And so therefore, every projective is smooth mm -hmm. in this case. Hence, uh, uh, for, uh, for you cry of a projective means three. But not for uh, for U chi of L. U chi of L could have lots of different non-isomorphic in the composable projective module. 
but for this one, uh, it is free. Okay. So now <coughs> we have this subalgebra. <coughs> okay. Now suppose uh, 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 suppose uh, dimension of n is equal to z, some number d. It could be one. Well, there are lots of one-dimensional subalgebras of this type. No problem. Uh, but we're interested in those which have very big numbers. Okay, then uh, let, um, let us consider the induced module. So let's introduce QM uh, uh, to be <coughs> now be induced. We basically consider the induced module. Uh, and be induced from this one dimension uh, 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 <coughs> n module, uh, UKI n module. And this is, uh, by one character group, it's the uh, uh, This is a module, well, let me just explain in, in more detail what it is. Okay, so we take um, uh, x1, uh, xn minus d, d <coughs> uh, a basis, of a complement of n in, uh, uh, in n. Just take any such. Then um, uh, the, the following monomials x1, a1, uh, xn minus d, an minus d, tens of 1 chi, uh, where ai run from 0 to p minus 1. So these things form a basis of QN. Uh, form a basis of QN. <coughs> Essentially, it's just by one character will fit. So in particular, we know dimension uh, of this kind of Now we look at um, <coughs> at U chi of L as a left uh, module over itself. So now we are going to use some elementary theory of associative algebras. So I already introduced this E1, ES. <coughs> we don't know what they are. So let E1, ES be all simple or irreducible or the use of U phi L modules up to isomorphism uh, and um, let Zi be a dimension of, uh, of Gia. Of course, we have no idea what they are. Then, uh, when we look at um, when we look at uh, U phi of L, as a left regular module over itself, so the, the algebra is in itself by left multiplication, then it is isomorphic to uh, the sum of projective power. <coughs> so this is a projective power of T1, and we have to uh, take direct sum of this T1 times plus, um, plus P of Ds. And the PI is, uh, P of PI is, uh, is the projective power of PI. Also, the endomorphism ring, that this is something that we're going to use later, the uh, uh, U chi L endomorphism of this module, uh, left table. <coughs> uh, isomorphic to u chi of L, but with opposite multiplication. With opposite multiplication. So all this u chi L <coughs> and the morphism will act on the right. That's why we have to switch the program. <coughs> so and this is as algebra. And now um, 
we return to this module Q. Uh, this why the decomposition is a completely general statement. It's a general statement about the finite dimensional source to logic. But the, so is it an exercise? You're going huh? to, is it obvious? Well, uh, it, it, the there is a book statement. by Pierce, very good book, and it, it covers this stuff. It's called Associative Logic. Finite dimensional. <coughs> Sorry? For finite dimensional solvers, or finite or in any characteristic. Any yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The first. Part, I think the book covers it in the setting of Hartzinian algebra. Uh, it's even, uh, even, even more there. Now, um, so what does it have to do with, with this uh, QM? Well, we claim that uh, QM, uh, QM is projective. Is projective. <coughs> as a new car of L motion. Now, uh, well, how do we prove this? Well, we use uh, support variety. Okay, so uh, uh, let, let me just indicate the proof. <coughs> so we need to show, we need to show that the support variety uh, N should be saturated in the process. No, 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 no. Uh, this is completely general. At N the moment, N, N, N is N not admissible, and that's all. Admissible subalgebra of N. Of some restricted algebra. So is uh, it restricted? Uh, in this case, <coughs> we, we do have to assume it is. Uh, yes, by definition, I, that you cross right. part right. of my definition. Right. Of saturated subalgebra a priori are not restricted, but they turned out to be. But this is comes from the definition. Yeah. So M is essentially the subalgebra of L. No, uh, M, uh, L has nothing to do with uh, reductive algebra could be anything. And N is kind of visible. So it only is attached uh, to some linear function. Ah, okay. N is kind of the subalgebra yeah. of L. Of L, yes. L could be, for instance, a simple algebra of Cartan type or whatever. So now we need to show that uh, this thing is zero, and we know what this thing is. So we take uh, let x be uh, well, we, of course, we want, uh, suppose suppose not uh, suppose for a contradiction, and then we take uh, a non-zero element x in uh, in here. So then, of course, we know um, x uh, to the p has to be zero. Right. Uh, <coughs> so, so if you see that this is our basis, uh, so, yeah. so if why, why it is sufficient to prove that rule L q and is zero? Because uh, because remember I, I stated last time a proposition proved by Friedman. Uh, yeah. 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 <coughs> Here we're using this local projectivity criteria. I mean, we're using it in full force. So this is the first thing, x to the p uh, is zero. And uh, so if uh, the first case, case one, so first case, uh, suppose x does not belong to uh, m. Well, it could happen, x is not an m. Then, you see, this is our basis. Then we, we may assume, after well, changing our basis, uh, then we may assume that x is equal to x1 on, the, on this board. Here. So it's part of the basis, and it is the leftmost element uh, in this monomial basis. So x1 is our x, and then, but then, uh, but then, it is straightforward to see that this is a free basis uh, of, of this module will be x2, a2, xn minus d, an minus d, then the one card. Uh, so this set uh, is this ai less than or equal to d minus 1. So this set is a free basis. So do you see? Uh, I will tell you. It's a free basis uh, of, uh, of u chi x. 
So these are just uh, <coughs> uh, each of these things are linearly independent, and when you apply x1 to this, it just multiplies on the right. It doesn't do anything. Exactly. So yeah, you get Jordan blocks of the same size. So therefore, uh, so therefore, uh, it cannot happen. So we conclude that x must be an n. But if x is an n, then uh, this contradicts the fact that our subalgebra was saturated. You mean no, it lies in it? Lies in it. Sorry? Oh, belongs to it. Sorry. Uh, x is an n. So you need u, q of what module? Uh, of x. No, I introduced u, k of x. It's just a very small thing. When taking polynomial in one way. So how it is related to saturated? At this point, there is no saturated. I will come up later. Ah, yes. yes. I, uh, this uh, situation is completely general. Mm -hmm. All you need is a linear function. So, um, why is this impossible? Well, because but by definition, if an element is in the support variety, it has at least one Jordan block of size less than P. And we produce, you see that there are all Jordan blocks that have the same size. Mm -hmm. So, X is an N. But then, uh, but then X belongs to N intersection this uh, E L of pi. Because uh, the L of k contains all support varieties, in particular, uh, as the L of k is a universal support, it contains the L uh, of k. And that's why we introduced it. That's why it is so important to know what this universal support is. So, uh, but that's impossible. So this contradicts, uh, this cannot be uh, as uh, as can is kind of and so we will foresee that this is indeed a um, projective module. Okay, then uh, then we know that this QM, whatever it is, is um, uh, can be written down as a direct sum of projectors in the composables P of T1, E1 plus, uh, plus P of PS, PS for some uh, for some multiplicity of PI and which, uh, which are no net. So now we want to compute this uh, BI. So how do we compute? To compute BI's we use some standard properties of projection model. Condition 3 se seems to be uh, assumed just to to work here. Huh? You, you, you put this strange condition 3 uh -huh. in the definition of admissible it's and just, just yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. This is the only way of reason for... Oh. for that is the only reason uh, why well, I don't have to avoid it. Uh, uh, oh. That's the only reason. But it, it, maybe did you, did you make the same example of what? This guy admissible subalgebra? I will give you lots ah, of examples, ah, ah, but okay. when we come to, yeah, oh, there will be, yeah. So, is actually condition to be equivalent to the project? Yes. <coughs> well, it, it's not equivalent. Uh, projectivity means that, uh, uh, that this, this has to be zero. But, uh, oh, yeah, maybe actually. Uh, maybe it is. I didn't think about it because it will come up later. So how do we compute this BI? So we have, let's compute this home. Uh, so, so what do you come to the uh, mm -hmm. QN is projected. Yes. So QN is projected. Now let's compute home. Uh, to determine these BIs, we need to compute this home. Uh, What's uh, the like C greater or equal to zero? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be zero. Could be zero a priori, yes. Uh, but in fact, in fact, QI could be just one project projected in the composite. At the moment, we don't know, but it's an induced yeah, module, so we can use Fravillius as So to compute this, and so since it's an induced module, we can use Fravillius. 
So, okay, let's now add one more. So, it's here the curve, fuel fire fail, turns up. Fuel fire fail, fuel fire. Um, here we have the I. Now we use Frobenius reciprocity. And by Frobenius reciprocity, this is just a form of, um, of U chi of N. And here we have this module K chi. Uh, uh, the uh, the more huh? Didn't you use before notation one chi instead of yeah. chi? Not yes, one chi. K one chi. K chi. Oh yes, okay. Yeah, it's the same. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, but it's uh, okay. Let me just simplify. K chi will be K one. Ah, okay. Let us introduce a, a, a just a shorthand for this module. Yes. Now, <coughs> so what is this? Uh, it's just the same as. Uh, this thing is just uh, all V and V I such that uh, uh, such that X E. So these are so-called feature vectors in this very general sense. So pi of X E for all X in it. So you see this uh, vector vector somehow appear, but we do know that uh, the I is projective. But it's kind of So uh, since uh, uh, n is kind of visible, Uh, EI is projected uh, over U chi of n. And this is by this uh, mysterious last one. And hence free. And hence free. So it's just a direct sum of, uh, of free U chi n modules. And therefore, we can uh, we can deduce from this that uh, the dimension of uh, the dimension of this home space, dimension of this home space, uh, k i i is equal to a i divided by p to the d, and this is because dimension of uh, u pi of n is equal to p to the t. Can you say again so why, why if it's projective it's free? Oh, because we have started, that was uh, the reason. It has only one projective in the Ah, computer. it's not. Yeah, it just has to be free. So now we compute, this implies again by some general stuff about cones into projective modules. So then, uh, and they computed that this bi is equal to all this ai divided by e to the corolla. In particular, this bi is now are never zero, and in fact, they remember a lot. So, <coughs> so therefore, uh, I guess, oh, it's, it's still here. So, uh, what, why did I say, oh, no. Yeah, there's something. It should be di, yeah. Okay. Should be zero. These guys are, are here. So say dimensional. Maybe I should say dimension of the eye. Which is the eye? Over the arrows. Oh, over or the arrows. Okay. Right, so well, what does it mean? Uh, therefore, uh, we have the following. We have the QM, which is a projected module. When uh, when you take uh, this many copies of uh, and you have this many copies p uh, to the z sums, you size a morphic to um, a left regular module. Uh, um, as as you have. Um,
So, and then we can compute the uh, endomorphism algebra of this module in two different ways. When you have direct sum of the same module, then you will expect matrix algebra to appear. So, uh, and now this is, uh, now we have some sort of strange W algebra. Uh, so we, we just introduce that. Uh, U, I reduce this uh, complicated foundation Lm to be the endomorphic modular uh, of um, uh, of this module Qn. And I will take the opposite because it will come up late. So then I uh, uh, have U phi L opposite, which is the endomorphous module of Hukaiel as left regular module. And so it will be isomorphic to the matrix algebra for the size of matrices P to the Z over endomorphous module of this projective uh, generator. Uh, and, and so this implies that U phi of L is uh, so I want to put the matrix algebra uh, of, uh, of this strange family algebra. So this algebra, um, yes. What is Q chi? Sorry? Q of chi is the same as Q n? Oh, sorry, it's Q n. Thank you. Depends on 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 our on, on the choice of kind of miscible solution. But you will see that in some special cases this will imply KW two conjecture. I'm going to talk about it uh, quite soon. This um, why it is a full matrix algebra? Because when you take the endomorphism for direct sum of the uh, same module, uh, you will you will eventually you'll have matrix entries in the same thing, which is which is this. Now, that, so there is a question mark what, what, what this algebra is. Well, uh, uh, there is a description of, of this also in this book by Pierce. He, he explains what endomorphism algebra is of induced modules are. So, what is this view of notation? It's just notation. Uh, didn't I introduce it? Oh, yeah. It's an notation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what is chi? Well, I mean, uh, since we are, Kai already played it from, because we don't have a matrix algebra, so it's I could put Kai, but it would make notation even for so you. But it will do it, it's just a temporary notation, it will go away very soon. Okay, but it does depend on Kai. It does, yes. Okay. So this UP of LN is what you call W algebra? Yeah, I will explain why, yes, yes. Uh -huh. And then you'll see, you will see that uh, it looks somewhat uh, similar. Uh, to double algebra that we are familiar with. So now, um, so what are these endomorphisms of, of induced models? So if uh, uh, so any uh, any u in uh, in this algebra uh, is determined. by its effect on, on one chi, of course. So if you know uh, the effect of, uh, of u on one chi, and we uh, and computes simply because this induced module is generated by one single left. And uh, so, and therefore, we can uh, embed u into, into the following algebra. So we have u chi of l. So u comes from u chi of l. But of course, it's not uniquely determined, and you have to factor out u chi of L n chi, uh, sorry, n chi. And I have to tell you that n chi is actually a shifted subspace, so it's the span of all, uh, the span of all x minus chi of x, uh, where x is in n, and it lives in, uh, in u chi of L. So it's just uh, a shifted uh, n. Inside and 
So uh, this is just the left ideal. Uh, and it's clearly it embeds here, but if you think a little bit, you will see that you have, it is actually it embeds into uh, our and variant because our module is induced and it's fairly uh, easy to see that this is true. And in fact, uh, uh, this has an algebra structure which is a good exercise. So another exercise, it's not very difficult. So you try it out by u chi f and chi of m uh, as a, a canonical algebra structure. And so, uh, and so in fact, it can be proven by looking at the basis that this is isomorphic to u uh, p Lm, the algebra. And so we can really now forget about this notation because this is what this is the algebra you look at. Really. And this, uh, in some special situation, this is what uh, how you obtain uh, finally W algebra in characteristic zero, except that you have to forget about the chi and replace it by ordinary. Uh, universal envelopment algebra, and you have to say that L is reductive and chi is important. So, but it, in fact, you don't need to do it. it. It is a very general construction which produces plenty of uh, uh, final data. So, I, I didn't understand how the map is defined. You uh, well, you take uh, you take U. Uh, it is clear that it will go here because this thing will cube. Uh, this vector one kind. So therefore, uh, of course, u comes from uh, from this um, from element in u chi. But why u is an element of n? Uh, yes, uh, u, it is uniquely determined by uh, <coughs> by it is uniquely determined by its effect on, on the canonical generator. Uh -huh. So therefore, it can be expressed at uh -huh. a basis. And this what that, that's where we get an element in u chi, but it's not unique. So therefore it is here. And then at the end you have to check that it, in fact it also is invariant under the joint tension. So you go to the robot of just slash, right? Mm -hmm. So you're just sending uh, U to it's a quotient. It's a quotient. Is that quotient equal to QN? Uh, yes, it, in fact, yes, so this quotient as a vector space is uh, is uh, isomorphic to QN. And, and you identify the one kind one of the one foot one foot as well. Yeah. So you take a and the three, uh, yeah, the three the mm -hmm. take uh, 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 I mean, yeah. yeah, and we have this mm -hmm. and, and the thing here is that uh, now let's compute the dimension of this uh, well, th these things are extremely easy to introduce they will always give you associative algebras and three theories call these objects I think idealizers and people uh, to prefer language of mathematical physics and saying that this is something obtained by Hamiltonian reduction, there are different names. But the, the, the truth is that at least these objects in general are very complicated. But not in this case. In this case, at least we know dimension. So, because we know uh, UK of L is a matrix algebra. Uh, uh, yeah, let me write it down. So, you kind of have this dimension p to the n, uh, and this is now we um, you know that this is the same as dimension of matrix algebra, and the size of matrix is p to the d over this thing. So, and therefore, this is equal to p to the 2 d uh, times dimension of this mysterious thing, which implies that dimension of um, u p l n is equal to n minus 2 d. Oh, sorry, p, but p to the power n minus 2 d. That's a number. So we know dimension. And if you allow p vary, then you could imagine what you get is a polynomial algebra in 
part, and so it's a deformation of some polynomial uh, algebra and gives you a Poisson structure and so on. If you manage to do it. So, uh, maybe uh, let me just begin this, uh, this, uh, this introducing a new section. I'm going to discuss KW2 conjecture and its generalization. This way, the, huh? in, in this construction, uh, N can be any subalgebra, but uh, this algebra is nice if you have it. Yes, if it's kind of visible, then we have this Marie so K2 conjecture, KW2 conjecture, and uh, well, possible generalizations. Sasha, is this a new section? Yes, I thought that would be, I guess, 2.4. 2.4. Uh -huh. okay. So, um, Katz and Weisfire uh, introduced two conjectures. One I already mentioned, KW1 and KW2. Is, is proven, but Victor asked me to, uh, to make some comments about possible generalizations of KW2. I'm going to do it. So, what is uh, KW2 conjecture? Okay, we have this uh, G, which is uh, the algebra of the reductive group. So, we keep our assumptions. Keep our assumptions. Uh, then, um, and let M be a finite dimensional u uh, of oh, u chi of g of so. um, and then that um, z of chi be one half of the dimension of the cohesion orbital. All Cohesion orbits have given dimension, so we can divide by two. And then KW2 says, which is theorem, so that P uh, e to the power of D pi divides dimension of M. So, and there is <coughs> a stronger version of this, well, so to say, not a stronger version, but a statement about sharpness. And this is due to Humphrey. So Humphrey is conjecture. It says that there exists uh, for any type uh, <coughs> there is uh, a module M, this P kind of kind uh, such that dimension is equal to p e to the power of zero. So uh, I'm going to uh, discuss these things in a moment. But uh, from from what I uh, sort of outlined here, you can you can feel that we, we are looking we are looking for some kind of visible subalgebra of this dimension. So now we just need to construct. For which I will need to talk about new potent orbits and things. <coughs> and also reduction to the new potent case. Now there is a generalization of, uh, or maybe we should, we should make uh, seven million breaks and then I will continue. On this conjecture, countries. Um, well, I, uh, in, in the paper that I wrote on, on this KW2 conjecture, I actually asked a question which is somewhat related to this about the sharpness. And also, um, Victor Kass uh, wrote a review on my paper for mathematical reviews, and he also uh, posed this as a question which was would be interesting to address. And then Janssen also asked this question. So Humphrey just spelled it out. It's but the question is very natural. Uh, there is um, another way uh, to, to extend it. Uh, well, so 
So if now let's take any uh, restricted free algebra. Now, uh, let L be a finite dimensional. So we say uh, uh, <coughs> or maybe uh, so we say uh, uh, L has uh, KW two property and uh, you know, if uh, uh, every find a dimensional L module uh, has dimension divisible by uh, P uh, to the dimension of L minus dimension of the stabilizer of pi uh, divided by 2. And this is uh, for every linear function pi uh, on L. So here um, we, we have to replace um, the dimension of, of the order by this difference. Um, well, for G, I will explain later that this, this boils down to the same thing, actually. Because the, the joint morphism, the coin joint morphism is, is separate in this situation. But in general, we don't have a group, so uh, you can ask a question like this. This is, uh, uh, there is one, one abstraction uh, to this is already appears when you look at one dimensional module. So this implies, uh, so if L uh, has a W2 property, then necessarily it must be that uh, the derived subalgebra of L is restricted. <coughs> So L is close to undertaking these powers, but this doesn't have to uh, be restricted in many cases. But uh, the existence of uh, uh, this property implies that it must be. So already if you look at one dimensional. So this rules out some uh, uh, some uh, algebra. But still, uh, so why? Mm -hmm. Why this property implies that uh, it has to be proven? Ah. It's, uh, yeah, it's not really hard to prove, but uh, that, that's uh, that's the only uh, uh, that's how the only abstraction I know of this to prove. There, are, uh, there should be many examples uh, when this holds. Out. Let me uh, discuss uh, this uh, saturated uh, subalgebra and the way to prove it, which leads to some interesting questions in characteristic zero. <coughs> so how well could one prove this? Um, okay. Um, so suppose L is, uh, uh, suppose L is saturated. Suppose then, um, um, then uh, the following question arises. And then if the answer is yes, then we would have uh, KW2 uh, property. So for any chi uh, in a star, so given chi in a star. Uh, wait a moment, but you had the notion of saturated subalgebra. What does it mean to uh, saturated? So saturated means it's, it's a subalgebra of G, for instance, of GLM. And, uh, ah, so L saturated yeah. in G. It, it leaves it, uh, in some algebra of reductive group. Uh, and, uh, yeah. uh, so L is called saturated, right. if it is saturated, then yes. the algebra of the reductive group. It's a subalgebra of the algebra of the yeah, a subalgebra of yes. some the algebra of the algebra of the reductive Saturated, yeah. yes. The saturated, yes, okay, in PMG. Uh, uh, then uh, the following uh, question arises here in Kai. Uh, and I'll start 
characteristic here, remember uh, this notion of uh, saturated involved this taking these powers uh, of n, but if p is very big, then this will just be zero automatically, so we don't need to worry about it. So now come to, uh, to which question of Lee theory does this uh, translate? So now suppose uh, now is it really to use for good construction? No. Uh, no. It's a, it's a purely question about uh, the structure of, uh, of a real algebra. But it's a difficult question. So suppose case C, and, uh, and uh, suppose uh, N is either, uh, no, no, uh, L is uh, either parabolic. or the centralizer of an important element, G and G is, uh, you know, let's say, a simple the algebra of a complex number. P is an important element. You can also ask for bi parabolics, intersection of two parabolics, which sum up the whole thing, or bi parabolics, to make it harder. So, uh, and now let's take a linear function on L. So we're taking linear function, for example, on the centralizer of uh, new photon column. So, does there exist? You mean L star? Uh, yes, L star. Does there exist? Uh, a you don't need it to be restricted. Subalgebra n, uh, which belongs to a new quantum cone of GC intersection with L, or it consists entirely of new quantum element, uh, such that. Now we have just uh, two conditions, so one condition is uh, dimension of n is equal to one half dimension of L dimension of the stabilizer. Right. And the intersection of M uh, is uh, L chi is zero. So it's a purely theoretical problem, but a very hard one. Because there are lots of linear functions on parabolics or on, on biparabolics or centralizers of important elements. And so can we sort of split it like this and uh, then should have a very big dimension. Yeah, question. This is a so laser size or an open problem. L chi is a stabilized. So the, the last condition ensures that n is chi admissible? Yes. If, if p is very big, yeah, then you reduce it more p, everything. And if p, the characteristic is very big, then uh, this condition already implies that n to the p is 0. Because any important element will be 0 when you raise it with this power. So many conditions will go away. And, um, and for saturated subalgebras like this, we have the standard description of support variety. Uh, so, so all this algebra is like subalgebra of this G. The N is, L. Uh, L. Uh, it should be in L, and it's consist <coughs> of new potent L. Of G. Of G, yes. Uh, in the complex case, is, mm -hmm. uh, what is L cup, or how is it 
Uh, now kappa is described, it does it well, it's uh, uh, yeah, okay. <coughs> it's just a stabilizer of, uh, of linear function, a coin joint stabilizer. So the second question is a special case of the first question, correct? Or no? No. Well, I you may have lots of this, but we also need this uh, uh, transfer transversality condition with respect to it. It should not overlap with the same problem. Yeah, but this is related to chi admissibility, or not? Yes, precisely. Yes, yes. yes. comes up. So if you can find such things, then uh, and that at least the algebra would have uh, KW2 properties in characteristic. At least ah. for P very big. So if one can solve this problem over C, that is a strong indication that uh, all these saturated, well, at least in this list, uh, have KW2 properties. Yeah, no, so I should vanish. And this has given for the mention, uh, you know. So, uh, can you recall the characteristic Q? You work over the great Yes. Yes. Right, now we can go uh, to, um, uh, back to um, uh, the algebra of reductive proof, again, to so, section three. Um, <coughs> I will need to say something about the important order. Uh, and uh, modular W. And uh, so mm -hmm. yeah. So this question you said, you started with assuming that L is parabolic by parabolic or stabilizer. Yeah, or stabilizer. You know some counterexamples in other cases? Mm, no. Well, I didn't think about it. It's just a natural question. Uh, if you want to prove this, you want, I mean, if you want to prove it by this method that I outlined, and you look for a large cardinal subject, which leads to some natural questions of least here. That's what I'm saying. What I'm asking uh, you don't know any counterexample. I personally don't, I don't know any of I mean, not in this class. But maybe Oksana knows. So, uh, again, we are assuming that G is the uh, algebra of uh, our reduction with G. <coughs> Uh, oh yeah, be before we go, uh, let, me, uh, uh, let me explain the reduction uh, to, uh, to the new important case. Why new important order? So we, we need a reduction uh, to, to the new important case. So our chi can be arbitrary, but uh, the main problem lies in, in the case where chi is uh, associated with an important element. So now suppose uh, uh, then you know we identify G with G star as before. Right now um, then uh, any linear function chi will have form X something for uh, X and G. For X and G. Well, um, then we have the Jordan Chevalier decomposition. Uh, you can write X as the sum of semi simple element plus the important element. Um, so this is Jordan Chevalier decomposition. Um, uh, in, in our real algebra, which, uh, which all this exists, so these elements commute. Uh, then, uh, and then let uh, L be uh, the centralizer of access, the centralizer of access. Under our assumption on G and also characteristic 
This is the latest about it. Because success is a semi simple element in the real algebra. It is the latest. The latest about it. Here, uh, it's not going to be true when t is small. But under our assumption, it is. <coughs> so, um, okay, uh, we write, uh, we write the corresponding triangular decomposition, and minus plus uh, plus n plus. The corresponding triangular decomposition of the linear algebra G, and uh, of course, our function chi is chi s plus uh, i n. So chi s is excess. It's associated with uh, excess and chi n similarly. Right, now, <clears throat> then, uh, what is important is, is the centralizer of x, because it's just a centralizer of uh, uh, if I have a linear function chi, it's just the same as the centralizer of this element x. And this lies in uh, the centralizer of uh, the semi-simple part, which is L. So the centralizer is small, it just sits in L. So then uh, n minus is admissible, is chi admissible. And not only that, it has a wonderful property. Uh, it's chi admissible and chi vanishes entirely from a from a minus. So just we don't need to take beta characters uh, in this case. We just take n and minus and vanishes. <coughs> it's very rare, and so in this case, uh, uh, in this case. We can describe. Uh, Are we assuming XS is non zero? Uh, sorry? Are we assuming XS yes, is non zero? Yes, suppose XS is non zero. Yeah, I'm reducing to. Uh, uh, to uh, because if it is zero, then there is no reduction. But XN is in time. It, it commutes with XS. No, but is E and minus or N plus? Is one XS one. is also in L because it commutes. No, X, yeah, uh, X XN. XN. Yeah. When XN the job ah, is sorry, sorry. position, they have to commute. Uh, it is also in L. They both are in L. And therefore, the linear function will vanish always and on, on that. OK, in this case, uh, we can immediately describe um, uh, this uh, this endomorphism algebra. And this algebra is just uh, isomorphic to canonically to u chi of L. But, well, one inclusion is quite clear because any element of this type will give, give you an endomorphism of our induced module. And dimensions also coincide. Both have the right dimension. So one inclusion is obvious, but by dimension reasons, they should be equal. Because these and this have the same dimension. So we immediately obtain this Friedlander and partial Marita equivalence. So we see that uh, uh, u chi of, uh, of g is isomorphic to some matrix algebras of some size n uh, over and one knows what this end is. And so this uh, reduces uh, the uh, reduces problem uh, KW to conjecture to, to, from, so we go from G to L to L. And that was one of the reasons one has to impose the so-called assumptions on G because we at some point have to pass to L. Mm -hmm. 
So what do we know about the pi restricted uh, to L? So we know that uh, uh, when you restrict chi to, uh, to the derived about the uh, when you restrict chi, then this is going to be the same as chi n restricted to the derived about the world. But the Jordan Shivanity composition, how does it affect you with respect to people? Well, they commute. Excess and excess and commute. So when you take these powers, you just uh, erase separately. Excess. Are you restricted? Yes, well. Yeah, the piece power map uh, on G is canonical. In particular, it is equivalent on the direction of the world, which is the way we define it. And so essentially, this reduces, uh, so this means may assume uh, uh, that uh, chi is equal to E dash and E is new for So uh, this Marita equivalent can be actually described explicitly. Uh, so it will take simple modules over L and we just induce and, and the, the result of this will be reduced. This was first proved by Hassel Weisheim. Uh, so when that the induced modules, that uh, induced from reduced for the high L modules stay reduced. And then later Friedler and Basham made it into more uh, Marita equivalents like this. Which one can prove now as it is. Why you take L, L and not L? Mm -hmm. Why you take Why L, L? Well, because chi restricted to L itself is not going to be zero. The chi is, uh, uh, so chi is equal to um, uh, x s plus x n. This, this one is, is more important than L. And x s actually commutes with L because L is right. its own centralized. So therefore, uh, XS, uh, L, L. Uh -huh. This form is uh, uh, G, F, G invariant. So we can put one B of L here and they can. But in our reduction, we, do, we just Sorry? have L. In our reduction, we have L, not F, L. No, no, we, we get L. That, I'm saying that uh, we can only reduce to this situation, which is not quite the same as reducing to. Uh, to re but from the representation theory point of view, you really may assume that is the point. But I thought L is the centralizer of X. Sorry? But L is the full centralizer. L is what? L is the centralizer of X, right? L, yes, yes. Yes. So why why you put L, L? So yeah. It's a derived subject. I know, but I don't, your, your reason for saying that was that you said that that's how you get this restriction to be zero, but I mean the restriction for the yeah, XS part to be zero. XS with L equals zero. Well, I mean, in the favor, I, I didn't want to a go joint to this. is zero, but the inner product is not zero. So I, the thing is, in current so over C, we would actually have this. So the center of L plus the drive zero. But this would be uh, this over C. Place, place, place. The characteristic P, this actually can fail. So yeah. this is not entirely uh, immediate. Uh -huh. But I didn't want to go. OK, OK, yeah. sorry. So, it's so in fact, if we have this treatment, which we often have, uh, then the reduction is obvious. So because chi, the, the whole, this is abelian, so yeah. it doesn't really affect the at all. Right, now, uh, so what do we know about um, the important orbits? The first uh, thing that uh, we, need, uh, we need to know, there are two facts. Uh, so the first part is, uh, well, uh, so n of g, the set of orbits, this is a finite set. This is a finite set. And this was proved by Richardson um, uh, first in late 60s. In fact, this is always true for any reductive group and for any characteristic. But uh, in that characteristic, it is much harder to prove. So the number of new quantum orbits is always finite. But in that characteristics, you, you expect some new orbits, but very few. Well, not, not very few if you're talking about symplectic, yeah. 
it has actually more borders and characteristic too, but we exclude them. And when you say bad, you consider multiplicity of Cartan in the Indian diagram or what? When I say sorry? Bad means bad you means must, multiplicity. No, no, bad yeah. means two, three, and five from type EA. Then there are only three bad primes, and if uh, four is six or seven, it's just two and three, and four or four and G2. And um, for B, C, and Z, you have to exclude B equal to B. So I, apart from this, the picture is uniform. Now this is the first part, and uh, the second part we're going to use, which also holds under our assumptions uh, on, um, on G and B, that, uh, that the Lie algebra of the stabilizer of any algorithm is, uh, is equal to the stabilizer of G and X, and this is called Now, how can one? Uh, so, all these properties actually come from um, <coughs> from this fitting that we use, it. and this is what Richardson did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, let me comment on on this part too. Um, so, we uh, we have. Uh, so what we need to show is that uh, that the portion map is separable at x, at every x. So we look at uh, the tangent space to the orbit, the joint orbit, and we need to prove that this is equal to g for every x. This is equivalent to part 2. So for every x, g. Uh, so how can you prove this? Well, we know uh, this is true for GLM. True for, uh, for GLV, where V is our vector space. And then we can write down uh, GLV as G plus L, as we did before. And our element X is here. And then you compute uh, so, uh, the function space as GLV uh, dot P is equal to uh, G of E bracket mm -hmm. E and this is equal to uh, G bracket E plus E F. And this still belongs to M. So, so here this is what we use here. Is E X? Yeah. Sorry? Is e oh yeah, yeah, thank you. This should be X. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and E is identity. Yeah. Gets confused. So this is really all you need because uh, on the other hand, the tangent space, that identity element, uh, then uh, <coughs> contains, uh, well of course it sits here, it sits here, and therefore you can deduce uh, by taking this projection that it is equal to it says it's here intersection with G. This is how you prove that uh, uh, that is uh, uh, part two and part one proved very similarly by the way because we know that for GLB there are finitely many new quotas orbit and then Richardson proved that when you intersect any sorry uh, when you intersect any new potent orbit with G, it will split into finite manual by this type of video. So this part one is, uh, can be proved uh, by rather elementary methods under our assumptions. Of course, this leaves some questions. Uh, about and still, um, and how do you say we in G is G unstable uh, if uh, if f of B is equal to zero for all for all f in this uh, in 
invariant tree and then uh, they should have positive repeat. So that's a basic notion of, uh, of invariant theory. Now, um, now one knows my Hilbert Mumford criteria. Q. Uh, so V is uh, is G unstable because G is a reductive group holds for any reductive group uh, um, there exists a whole character lambda there exists uh, <coughs> There is a comparison. Lambda, which is just a um, rational homomorphism from K cross to G, uh, such that uh, uh, V belongs to. Um, so this comparison lambda will give rise to uh, a Z gradient uh, on our real algebra. And yeah, this should be in, into, in, the, in the positive degree. So in G lambda pi, and this is a weight space for lambda associated to pi. So this field is just a weight space. Uh, for, for the tallest lambda field cross uh, associated to, uh, to weight pi. And we have this decomposition. So, uh, this is a new radical of a parabolic of a parabolic subalgebra. So this implies that uh, so all uh, G unstable vectors, all G unstable vectors are uh, in, uh, in this big uh, irreducible set. They live in here, where M plus is a uh, new radical of a parabolic. Because all these things are in the new radicals of parabolic, so therefore, uh, now, um, <coughs> so we also know that we have finite remaining important orbits. <coughs> So uh, since we have finite remaining important orbits, and if we take any uh, new important element E in G, we want to show if it is G unstable, uh, then uh, there is an infinite set, uh, infinite uh, set, well, let's call it omega, in K cross infinite set such that uh, E is G conjugate the lambda e or all lambda in this set of Because we have uh, finitely many orbits, and therefore, since we have finitely many, so we have uh, f uh, of e is equal to f of lambda e uh, for all lambda in omega. There are infinitely many of these things, so this implies that. Uh, uh, e is just a so therefore uh, geon stable vectors are exactly uh, an important element uh, in this type of uh, <coughs> the full geon stable vectors And this holds in, in all characteristics. So now we can uh, apply uh, the term for so theory because uh, for G unstable vectors we have uh, uh, so, so called optimal torus. This is for uh, for G unstable vectors. So this remark implies that this is true for all lambda in k star. Sorry? Need, 
is it a it implies that for, for all the case studies. Yes, yes. Do we have the optimal tori even in bad characteristics? Yes. Because we still have, the only argument that we're using here is that uh, the rough finance remaining important. No, no, that, I, yeah, <coughs> but it was the optimal, no, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. <coughs> so, um, so we, uh, well, let me just, tell this very briefly, this is a set of all uh, co-characters from J cross uh, in G. And this is, of course, uh, uh, is a set of G uh, at star of T, where T is a maximum torus, where G belongs to G. And this is just a set of uh, the, the uh, letters of co-characters of the torus T, and then it has um, W invariant uh, scalar product. So we can define, using this, we can define. Uh, sorry. Uh -huh. Sorry. Now, important <coughs> to be important uh, in GLD. Uh, uh, important means of the definition as an essence restricted reaction. Uh, and in the yes. yes. <coughs> So we can define a gene variant norm uh, on this set. It's, it is unique up to a positive scalar. Uh, this value is in, uh, in fact, in rational character, but in, in, in positive, uh, real, in positive uh, rational. So, and then uh, for a, um, yeah, if, okay, I should just say one more thing. If, um, if V is uh, mu unstable for some uh, one dimensional, uh, for some uh, co character mu, then, uh, and, and it is not zero, then we can write down V is equal to VK plus VK uh, plus one. Plus so on, where the i are in G uh, mu i. So for S uh, as and here. And then we say that K, we define K to be M uh, mu e. Yes. Okay. So this is um, the set of Mu V mm -hmm. and mu V. Uh, yes, yeah. M, uh, in K, oh yeah, M V, yes, thank you. Uh, mu V. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one that is optimal, uh, uh, for B, if, uh, by definition, uh, if this quotient then uh, lambda B divided by the norm of lambda is bigger than the of and mu B divided by the norm of mu, or all mu for non zero. Uh, but zero means here just a trivial cocaine. Uh, and so Kelf proof and Prosol and such things exist and have very nice properties. So they exist. And uh, yeah, I will uh, <coughs> explain what it is. So for um, uh, for mu and X star of T uh, X star of G uh, that P mu B is the following uh, sub algebra. So we take G mu i, i bigger than or equal to zero, and that's a parabolic. That's a parabolic.
And we also have um, the corresponding P of mu. It's a parabolic sum group uh, uh, in G. The unique parabolic sum group is G, which has a real algebra P of mu. Now, uh, this is a parabolic associated uh, to the Kokar. <laughs> so, uh, let uh, lambda to be uh, the set of all optimal, uh, lambda d be the set of all optimal. Uh, for characters uh, for G. Then uh, there are two important properties. Uh, the first property is that uh, uh, P of uh, lambda is equal to P of mu for all lambda mu in this set. And uh, that's why this parabolic is called optimal. So uh, we denote it, uh, denote this by, <coughs> by P of V because it only depends on V. Now this is called the optimal uh, parabolic for an unstable vector. And uh, this actually implies that uh, the centralizer of V or the stabilizer of V is contained in P of V. That's what we want. So the whole stabilizer, because we're interested in, uh, uh, in this, and we know uh, that the Lie algebra of G of V, which is just an uh, infinitesimal stabilizer, and it is, as we know, the Lie algebra of G of V, and this leads to the parabolic uh, here. Is it easy? To, hmm? It's easy. This follows from, um, essentially, uh, yeah, one, one also has to describe this, and it's fairly easy to talk yeah. I don't remember immediately how to do it, but it's not hard. This bit is not hard. But this la, la, lambda and, and mu have, and mu have, have um, values in the same torus? Or uh, they can no, no, no. Uh, they, well, first of all, if there is a certain degree of, uh, of freedom here, because you could, uh, apply, uh, you could apply any element from the centralizer of B, to an optimal uh, co-character, it will give you another. Is that the, does the centralizer act transitively on these co-characters? Uh, uh, are they all, if you have two optimal co-characters, are they conjugate by something from the centralizer? I think, I think so, yeah. Well, there are some yeah, the results. Yeah, I can tell you next time. Okay. Probably, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you say associated co-character, that's true. Well, they all, uh, well, what one can say that they all belong, uh, this optimal co-character, they all live uh, in this part of optimal parabola. Well, they all live in this PLC. <coughs> right, um, now, so let's see then, how can we um, construct um, um, we need a bit more, actually. So I'm trying to, uh, to construct a uh, 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 triadmissible subalgebra, uh, which is very big. So first, first remark, which actually uh, was uh, noted uh, by Hans Peter <coughs> quite long ago, is that over C, uh, over C, uh, the uh, co-character, the co-character uh, coming from SLP triple, coming uh, from H uh, in SLP triple. <coughs> in characteristic P, unfortunately, we cannot do this because, uh, well, in characteristic zero, we know uh, all eigenvalues of R H are integers, so we, we do have this gradient, and the corresponding co-character will be optimal. 
but in characteristic P, we only have eigenvalues in FP. And so we don't have a Z gradient, we only have um, a Z P gradient. Nevertheless, uh, it still is, uh, is true. <coughs> so in our case, in fact, this holds in all characteristics. Uh, so uh, this still holds. characteristic P, but uh, one has to replace H by a co-character lambda E such that it's the real, real algebra of lambda E of, of K cross. Uh, is a spam of it. So one can find such a thing, and, uh, and then we, uh, we still have the same gradient that you can obtain by reduction uh, mod P, and so on. So um, we have a decomposition, G is equal to the red sum of G1 that E I, I in Z. That's, that's for any new potent element E. Although, let's say not zero. So, so if you take any uh, new potent element, uh, well, we have this uh, decomposition. Now, E belongs to um, G lambda E2. So, as in characteristic zero, it will have weight two. So, it lives uh, in the homogeneous component of E2. And we also have that G E uh, is contained in, uh, in the parabolic E one the E and uh, the algebra is a homogeneous subspace. This will come up next time, homogeneous subspace. In this parabolic P lambda I bigger than to zero. So everything is as nice as uh, as in characteristic zero. Uh, why continues to be in two in the second? Uh, because the uh, yes. Uh, uh, this is uh, the way we construct uh, lambda e. We, th th this requires uh, introducing very different lot of notation. Uh, but, uh, well, we just uh, the, essentially what we do, we attach to H uh, this weighted Dinkin diagram. So which has uh, well, we attach zeros, ones, and two over the same. No, point. I mean characteristic p because of course if you can embed in the same two. No, but we, we do not embed them to a sort of triple. We cannot do it. Yeah, exactly. But we cannot, uh, we can mimic H, because uh, H uh -huh. is called characteristic, so to yeah. uncharacteristic zero. Uh -huh. To the characteristic, you can assign a label this uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, for good gradients, it yes. always. Uh, yes. And then out of this uh, 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 weight Dinkin diagram, you obtain a torus. And then this torus will give you the same properties, but yeah. in characteristic. Once you prove that this torus is optimal, then we get this for free, this intuition. And that's what we need. Sorry? So how do we get this number 2? Why not 2 plus p? Yeah, it's a good question. Because uh, now this, these are integers. There is no they are yes. Well, we, so we take, in the cell to triple, we take this element H. So this element H, we assign, uh, there is, we one can assign a weight Dinkin diagram. So out of this weight Dinkin diagram, we obtain a gradient in characteristic P. And it turns out that this important element is conjugate to element in this component. It requires some work. But it just falls from the fact that real algebra is equal to Right? No, it doesn't follow. No, no, no. So that was, I mean, your question was correct. But it's it not so. 
Yes, no, it's, so it could be h plus, it could be a priori 2 plus p or 2 plus 7. So it's about that assumption. Uh, I was just trying to explain how to obtain these torques, how to how to get it from so you, wrote, you wrote S O, which means so. this implies, right? Uh -huh. And this is what now you say it doesn't imply. No, but, but what I said was previously, this still holds in characteristic E, but one has to replace H by a torus. Mm -hmm. But not any torus. Not any torus. It has to be also. Oh, oh, in more than one way. Uh -huh. But Sasha, the thing about this is that it, this won't work for these extra nilpotent classes that you get in positive characteristic because you yeah, don't in, have. Uh, in uh, this is a, a, yeah, this is very interesting. Uh, what what happens in this case that uh, <coughs> we do have um, uh, we do have this uh, optimal <coughs> optimal co-characters are the same, but E is not. It is not going to be all this great. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. But uh, the, uh, the set of optimal to characters so always comes from characteristic zero. Yeah, and then somehow the, yeah. the E lives. The, the, yes. Lives, yeah. And that's why you get these listed uh, pieces, unipotent pieces. But the number of these pieces it can be parameterized by this uh, co character. And so in both characteristics, you don't have the gradient. We don't have the gradient, but we have the same set of optimal to characters as in characteristic zero, which all come from a cell to three. The element is so the element two. is no longer greater, but it belongs to a parabola, a new radical of a parabola. In fact, the one that is greater, which is also fine, is in the smallest orbit as a circle. So there will be some new pot elements above it as well. There may be, but not many, because there are very few extra classes. Yes, and I should also say uh, there is something that, that we also have. We have, but when we take this uh, P uh, one by P, another property, which one, one has to prove. And when we take this, and this is a direct sum of G1 by I, where I is bigger than the We have this nice property as well. Of course, of course, in characteristic zero, but also in uh, characteristic. In, 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 even in better. No, no. no um, this is the reason why uh, uh, things go wrong in better case. They lose this. Because the orbit uh, orbit map is no longer separate. And that's why that's the only reason uh, for, for the new important uh, conjugacy classes for people. But you still have the group, is the center of the slide in, in the group. Uh, in the group, yes. That, that that is true. Yeah. That is always true. Okay, now, uh, so what can we do now? Uh, so now, just for, for simplicity, we just try G, uh, I to be uh, G on the G, I. Right. So then we have, uh, so let's see what we have. So G is uh, the composites which we have some Now we have our new quotient element E and G2, and we have our G E to the last. But P is not good. P is very good. Okay. 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 So um, <coughs> now we define, uh, we look at G minus 1. Uh, so on G minus 1, uh, we define a skew-symmetric form, a skew-symmetric form, uh, which I will denote by this density uh, vector, uh, by, by, by the following form, so it's just by uh, x comma y to be e bracket x y. And this is not the general. This is not the general in the sense uh, uh, G does not intersect this G minus 1. 
Because if there is something which is uh, uh, which brackets uh, to zero with any y, since our transform is, uh, is invariant, this will imply that e bracket x, x will be in the central line of three, and that is uh, not the case. So therefore, in particular, this has even dimension. Uh, yeah, just one more thing. So uh, the dimension of g minus one is equal to two s. So it's even, and uh, the <coughs> we take a bit basis with respect to this form. So z one z s z one uh, prime z s prime here bit basis. So that uh, z i z j prime is equal to delta i j. So now the basic is not two. A uh, good question. It can be. It can be two. <laughs> but I will comment on this. But not today, but next time. <laughs> so in characteristic two, we don't allow a lot. We only allow type A. Uh, <clears throat> so okay, if you take uh, a bit basis. Uh, I just uh, I skipped some other uh, brackets, so I don't need to find. So let L be uh, uh, let curly L uh, be the span of uh, uh, that one prime that S prime. So dimension of L is at rest one half of dimension G minus one, uh, and we also have that uh, E bracket. Uh, L comma L is equal to zero by construction. So now we define uh, uh, M. We define M uh, to be L plus the stuff which lies below. So plus the sum of GI where I is less than or equal to minus two. And that subalgebra is kind of missing. Then uh, uh, maybe exercise. I think uh, you can work it out from what I already mentioned. Uh, then uh, uh, then the sky is the sky is uh, taking in a project with me. Sorry? The chi is taken in a closed key. Yes, chi oh, yes. so, so is, uh, is taken in So it's a linear function associated with E. In characteristic 2, uh, it's a young uh, there is a minor complication because one has to choose L more carefully. So M is chi admissible, uh, and uh, it has the right dimension. Dimension of M is equal to uh, one half of dimension G. And that uh, essentially proves the KW2 conjecture once we work it out. Well, I will continue next time. Sorry, I'm going to. You said the last step was not difficult. Yes, uh, uh, it will all follow from, from essentially from the father. Uh, <coughs> but one important thing that e, P bracket E is the sum of all things. And, uh, and, and, the, and the other important thing is that G E lies in P uh, in Q and D. From that you will see that you can, you can then prove the dimension of the uh, central line is a, as in characteristic zero, dimension of G zero plus dimension of G one. And that's all the whole one is. Yeah. Uh, it's important for social algebra not to take L, take M equals just the sum, and then take another algebra.